The first two reflexes we're going to cover are the fear paralysis and the moral reflex. The first two reflexes we're going to cover are the fear paralysis and the moral reflex. I like to cover these two reflexes together because they're very interrelated. The fear paralysis reflex is the very first reflex that appears and it's meant to integrate before the infant is even born and it's meant to integrate into the moral reflex. These two reflexes are both responsible for an infant's sense of fear and danger. Now if these two reflexes don't get integrated, they greatly affect how a child functions in life. Because they're based on their perception of fear or being in danger, a child always seems to live on guard or is fearful, which is no way to live as a child. So let's talk a little bit about the fear paralysis reflex. The fear paralysis is exactly as its name sounds. It is a paralysis of the system in the face of fear. A child with a fear paralysis reflex still intact will be extremely fearful. These are the children that have fears and phobias well beyond logic would allow. They're very fearful, they're beyond shy, they're withdrawn. If a child still has a fear paralysis reflex, it's very hard for them to engage in the world, get involved, try new things and feel confident because they are constantly in fear of danger, real or imagined. So when we face fear, or danger or perceived danger, we have three responses. We fight, we flee, or we freeze. Now the fear paralysis reflexes response is a freeze response. It is a paralysis of the system. So let's talk a little bit about the moral reflex. So the moral reflex is a little bit different than the fear paralysis and it's a little bit less intense than the fear paralysis reflex. The moral reflex is an anxiety reflex. The moral reflex causes them to be hypersensitive to many things. One, their performance, their environment around them. They're afraid to be embarrassed. They're afraid to try new things. They're afraid their friends might not like them. They're afraid their work might not be good enough. So much more of an anxious feeling. The moral reflex causes a person to choose the other two options in the face of danger or perceived danger. And that is the fight or flight response. Now, the fight response is obviously exactly as it sounds. You get prepared for a fight. Now these are our kids in school that are incredibly defiant. They have, or as a small child has tantrums. They don't want to play nicely. They want to control the rules. They want to manipulate the situations. And this is because they really are afraid to feel out of control. So by putting up a big stink, having a tantrum or controlling their environment, they feel safer. The flight or flee response is when we see our kids who get really shy, they withdraw, they're our video kids, they don't want to have to engage in real life, so they engage in videos. So this is how you might see this in your child. The good thing about primitive reflexes is that at any stage of development or any age, we can go back and we can integrate these reflexes into the system. The way we do that is we recreate simple infantile movements that they would have done the first time to integrate the reflex and it gives the brain a second chance to rewire itself so that it can finally put the reflex to rest. In the program that the Organized Mind has developed, there we will show you how to simply test for primitive reflexes. So the way we test for primitive reflexes is a two-part system with common sense and logic thrown in. We can determine from your child's characteristics, their behaviors, some of the reflexes that might be intact just by looking at how they're using their body or how they're behaving. That will tell us a lot about what primitive reflexes are still intact. So first we'll look at a characteristics list, a behavior list, and make some assumptions about which ones we think might still be intact. Second, second. We do simple movement exercises to see if the reflex will respond and is still active. And then thirdly, we add common sense and logic. There's Reflexes are usually retained because of an interruption, a trauma, or some type of problem in that stage of their development. And we simply go back and look at what was our child's experience through that developmental stage to determine if we believe that that might be a problem. From there, we determine if we think it would be beneficial for the child to do the exercises that would integrate that reflex. And in my opinion, because the exercises are so simple, I always like to go on the side of being safe, 
rather than sorry. So if there's any doubt in my mind that the child may have the reflex, I say do the exercises for 30 days and just be sure. Fear paralysis and moral reflex are two of the most important reflexes out of the eight because they're at the very beginning and they can block all of the reflexes that come behind it. If for any reason your child still has a fear paralysis reflex intact, it's very hard for them to move forward. So when I work with kids, I generally, because it's so easy to do, have them do the fear paralysis and moral reflex exercises just so I know that these are not acting as roadblocks to all of the other reflexes we're going to work on. Once you integrate the fear paralysis and moral reflex for your child, you will see a major difference for your child. It relieves them of a lot of anxiety. It allows them not to be oversensitive to their environment around them. It allows them to not live in fear. They're able to better socially interact and have confidence in, their, in themselves. Yeah. If you believe that your child might have a retained fear paralysis or moral reflex, I would strongly encourage you to go over to my website and check out the program that we have so that you can test for this.